Welcome everyone. We are um, going to wait just a second as Zoom is putting everybody from the waiting room into the meeting to get started. It looks like that has happened, so I'd just like to give a quick welcome and introduction. My name is Erin Lurie and I manage Hillwood's Adult Public Programs. We are delighted to have you here for our very first virtual floral workshop. Um, we're going to be going over a couple of things and soon I will turn you over to our expert Amy Wilbur who you can see on screen as well. But let's see, wanted to make sure everybody knows that we've got a wonderful array of virtual programs coming up at Hillwood this summer. Next month in August, we've got a lecture by one of our curators on the new discoveries about Hillwood's collection that she has found in her first two years. Of course, Amy has another floral uh, design workshop next August about the bounty of the summer gardens. And we also have some family virtual tours, which are really, really fun. If you know people with small people in their lives, please ask them to join us. This is, we hope, a great virtual and interactive experience. We want to see you and we want to hear and answer your questions. Please make sure that when you are not speaking, we're going to ask everybody to keep on mute and send most of your messages today through the chat feature. You may need to, if you're using a mobile device, you may need to move your mouse or tap the screen in order to get that toolbar to pop up, but please submit questions through the chat. Also, and I see that many of you have already joined us with video, it is lovely to see your smiling faces, particularly if you are joining us um, by working with flowers at, at the end, we'd love to have everybody share their finished product if you're, if you're creating while we go through this class. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn you over to Amy Wilbur, who is Hillwood's floral event and decor designer. And I'm gonna let Amy introduce herself and take it away. Great, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be our first uh, virtual floral workshop. So bear with us if there are any technical difficulties. But we really appreciate everyone coming out and taking some time in their day today to join us. I think it's one of the things that's helped definitely me uh, be able to have some kind of normalcy and something to look forward to um, during this whole pandemic to be able to work with flowers and to be able to be out in the garden. So one of the things uh, before we even get started, I just wanted to give a little shout out to our horticulture staff. Uh, we've been together from the start of the pandemic, so it's been four months now together. But we've really been able to kind of embrace working in the gardens together, um, being able to create gardens so that we can go out and harvest from them every week and to have things that are beautiful for our visitors to come and see. So if you haven't come to Hillwood to check out the gardens and the mansion, you should definitely come and see what's going on. Um, and also a big thank you to Kate for providing um, us with the protection and the security that we have in terms of being safe here on campus. Of course, Kate, the director of Hope. Um, oh, and I would like to say hi to my mom. She's joining us today as well. Um, okay, so let's get started. Uh, the one thing that I find a lot of people have questions about uh, when you're about to start a floral arrangement is how to actually start. So one of the things that I always like to go to first is talking about color. I think that when you go into your flower market or into the Trader Joe's, wherever you're going to pick up your flowers, it can be really overwhelming. So if you sort of start out with um, an idea of color in mind, it will help sort of narrow down your choices and then also make for a little bit um, of a harmonious balance between what you're picking out and what it is that you're trying to accomplish in terms of the end goal. So when I think about color, I often think about the color wheel. And then uh, from there, you can sort of understand what we're talking about in terms of 
the different colors that we're using and why it is that they're working together. So the first thing um, that we have are, you know, your cool colors and then also your warm colors. So that if you're uh, thinking in terms of a color palette, you can think in terms of either something that is all similar in color uh, that's on the color wheel with like the warm colors or the cool colors. And then you can kind of go from there. Uh, when you're in your flower market or wherever you're picking up your flowers, you can kind of then narrow down your choices by just thinking in terms of all the colors that are gonna sort of uh, blend in together. So again, if you look at the color wheel, you can see that you can have all of like your oranges to yellows in one um, grouping, or you could do all of your blues to purples in another grouping. And that kind of narrows things down and I think makes it a little bit more uh, approachable. The other thing that you can do with color, which I always love to do, is use complementary colors or opposite colors on the color wheel. So that's your oranges and blues, or your reds and greens, or your purples and uh, yellow color combinations. So when you're thinking about those as well, uh, to me it really reminates the idea of the old Dutch master florals, because they oftentimes used a lot of these um, complementary colors to really make the other colors pop in um, their paintings that they did. Uh, the one thing also, one of my favorites is using oranges and blues together because in nature, when you see orange uh, flowers and blue flowers, they're often very, very brilliant and they um, really pop out. And today we're gonna be able to use some uh, blue flowers as well. So it's a really kind of rich um, color palette when you see the two opposite colors together. So that's just one thing that you can kind of think about when you're going out to purchase any of your flowers or if you're going out to your garden to kind of narrow down your color palette that way. The next thing I like to think about is using a focal flower. And that's gonna be something that is gonna be what draws your eye to one part of the arrangement. So if you look at the two photographs that are on the screen now, you can kind of see what the focal point is. Um, the one on the right side is the fritillaria that's sticking all the way up at the top. And then on the left side, it's the one ranunculus that is um, its own color and kind of doing um, the part where you're sort of honing in to that one spot in the arrangement. So that's one thing that you can think about. Um, today we're not gonna focus so much on just one focal flower, but we're gonna use a couple of flowers to uh, really make the arrangement kind of pop out and draw the viewer in. And then the other thing you wanna think about when you're creating an arrangement is where it's gonna go, because this is a very important detail that if you're creating a centerpiece for a dining room table, you don't necessarily want to have this super high arrangement in the center of the table blocking other guests from being able to see each other. Or you could, I mean, it's up to you. It's uh, sort of depending on what it is that you are trying to accomplish. But again, you really want to sort of think in terms of where you're going to be placing your arrangement. So again, if it's going to be on a dining room table, or it's going to be on a buffet table, and it's going to be viewed from all sides, you're going to want to have an arrangement that is a 360 arrangement. If you're doing an arrangement that's just going to be up against a wall, you can just do it one-sided. That way you're not sort of squishing flowers in the back. Uh, the, most of the arrangements that we're doing here at Hillwood are always one-sided. Um, they're up against the back of a wall, or there's something that you can't get to the back of to see. Um, but we have actually been now doing an arrangement in the visitor center where it is a full 360 arrangement. So it is kind of fun and it's a little bit challenging to sort of figure out how you're gonna make the back as delightful as the front. Because a lot of times when I'm creating an arrangement, I'll be like, ah, the back looks fine. It'll, we'll just stick some flowers in here and it'll be fine. But in reality, you really want it to be something that you're thinking about the whole time. Uh, one of the tools that I like to use for that, and I have one here today, is a Lazy Susan. 
So I'll put my container on the Lazy Susan so it's, eight, it's easy to then sort of turn the arrangement around so you can really get a good perspective of the arrangement from all sides. So that's another thing um, just really to sort of think about in terms of what you want to do with your arrangement. Something else that I find to be uh, really kind of intriguing, especially with all the different flowers, is adding a textural element so that you have different things that are interesting for the viewer to look at. So if you look at the different flowers, you can see that they all have this different texture and different shapes. And that also, if you're uh, creating an arrangement, really helps to make it a little bit more interesting and also helps to kind of give it an overall um, feeling that you really want to invite the person looking at the arrangement to sort of like come in and even want to like touch the flowers or it gives it something so that they will be intrigued to come in and have a closer look. And it also, if you're uh, thinking about when you're actually looking at your arrangement from far away versus up close, I always like to think of the um, painter Monet that you don't want it to look only good from far away. Once you come up close, you also want it to look interesting as well. And so I think that um, is one of the elements with texture that also helps um, keep the uh, viewer engaged in your arrangement and making something that's really interesting and fun for you as well uh, when you're making your arrangement at home. Uh, the other thing that I always like to think about um, when I'm starting a project for the visitor center or for an event that we're doing here at Hillwood is what the overall sort of feeling that I want to create. Is it going to be a romantic feeling? Is it going to be a more contemporary feeling? Is it going to be something that, you know, I make it look like I just walked out into the cutting garden, I just cut all these flowers down and then just magically have them in a vase and it looks rather whimsical and loose and also um, not so structured. Uh, so that's uh, something else that you can think about when you're creating your arrangement as to what it is that you want the feeling to be. Um, I tend to like to have these sort of loose and asymmetrical arrangements that are a little bit more reminiscent of a garden, um, especially in the sort of British tradition of like these amazing floral gardens that they go out, they just like pick these beautiful flowers, they throw them into the vase, it looks effortless, but again, it ends up usually taking hours to create something that looks so effortless. Um, <clears throat> but it is something that you can do in terms of, you know, if you do have a garden and you have that luxury that you can go out there, you can just sort of like go in, snip some things and just sort of throw it into a vase. Because at the end of the day, they're flowers and flowers are always beautiful and they're always cheerful to have in your house. So it, uh, it really doesn't matter like what it is that you're doing with the flowers um, as long as it's something that helps to bring joy to you. And also one of the things that we like to think about at Hillwood is being able to bring our gardens inside uh, to the mansion so that it's a real seamless transition from garden to mansion as well. So today, what we're going to do um, with our floral design is one of my favorite things is in um, July, especially this time of year, is to be able to incorporate herbs. Um, I think that especially if you're doing uh, an arrangement that is on your dining room table or anywhere near food, it's really nice to have herbs that tie in with maybe whatever it is that you're cooking or serving to then have that mimicked into your arrangement. So this whole workshop is going to be based on flowers that are in bloom right now, most likely in your garden, and also the herbs that are um, ready to be harvested as well. Uh, because of the nature of we are you know, not together um, in the conservatory doing the workshop, I wanted to do something that was going to be easy enough that you could go out to your grocery store and be able to pick up materials 
And also, um, I typically always use chicken wire in my arrangements. Uh, we don't use any floral foam here at Hillwood, um, and we haven't used that for years now. So I needed to think of an alternative to something to put into your vase to kind of hold the stems together. So we came up with this idea of using lemons and limes. And although we don't grow lemons and limes here, it's something that's easily attainable to get um, from your grocery store or whatever to use as your filler. And I think it adds a little bit of fun and um, makes it feel kind of summery to have those as an element in your container as well. So today what we're gonna do, um, I know that some people were able to pick up materials, other people got the materials list ahead of time. But if you don't have exactly what we have here, it's not a big deal. You can always substitute on any kind of flowers you want. You can always substitute the colors. This was just the palette that I picked out for today. But again, this is something that, you know, if you went to the flower market today and they're like, there are no hydrangeas anywhere, there are a lot of other things that you can then sub out for the different flowers. So before we kind of get started actually creating the arrangement. Um, I'm gonna take a second here and if Aaron has any um, questions from you guys, I can definitely answer them now and then we'll get started with everything. And I just sent a message through the chat to everyone. We'd love to know how many of you are planning on creating an arrangement as we go through today. I can see Kathy filling a vase right there. I am, Eva. Excellent. But can you put up some, keep the directions up a little longer than they have, have been? We can absolutely go back. So in a few minutes, we're gonna, um, transition to a, a bigger screen of Amy and you can see how Great. she is working Great. rather than through the PowerPoint. Great. And I'm happy to share the presentation with folks afterwards. Many of, many of these guidelines were also included in the attachment that came with your Zoom link today. Yeah, I got that. Thank you very much. And Nicola just asked if um, we'd like Thanks. folks on video. We would love to see you, especially if you're working. Diane, I am not making flowers either today, so you are in good company, I hope. And Sandra, thanks for joining us from Norfolk. Are you sure if I can just do this later? Why don't you stand until three? Okay, so we are going to get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is explain the flowers that we have, the herbs that we have, and what we're going to do with them. So the first flower that we have is delphinium. And this is something that we actually grow here at Hillwood. I think that they just uh, went out of season. I think that warm snap that we had here in DC just kind of killed them off. But this is delphinium and we do have that here. Um, and it's a beautiful flower. Again, the one thing that I love about this delphinium is that this blue is so vibrant and it's, um, it's something that, you know, is to me is amazing that nature is able to produce this vibrant blue color. So we have the delphinium and then we have our happy little sunflowers. Our sunflowers are just starting to peak in our garden right now too. So it's really kind of fun to see them all starting to open up and they're always so beautiful. And then we have some sweet little tea roses. Um, again, we have an amazing rose garden here at Hillwood, thanks to Jessica. So um, we wanted to represent uh, that as well in the arrangement. And then of course we have one of my favorites, uh, the blue hydrangea. And this to me is always a flower that evokes the memories of my childhood and uh, being up in Cape Cod and seeing all these amazing, beautiful blue hydrangeas everywhere. And our hydrangeas right now at Hillwood are also in blue, but these are not from the grounds. 
And then um, again, like I said, we have we have lemons and we have limes, which we're going to fill our container with, and that will help um, to stabilize your stems in the arrangement. Uh, we have basil as one of our herbs today, and then we also have our rosemary, and then last but not least, we also have mint. Uh, and mint is one of my all-time favorite herbs to use in an arrangement. It's, um, it's one of those things though, I think as a gardener, you're not very happy to have mint uh, growing because it will take over every inch of space. But as a floral designer, I think it's an amazing little herb and it's um, one of the ones that really brings like a nice scent to your arrangement. So the first thing that we're gonna do is start with our container and we're going to fill the container with the lemons and the limes. And so what I was doing um, when I was sort of practicing this earlier is I was creating sort of a circular pattern of the lemons and limes so that there's a bit of a hollow space inside. So that's where I can actually stick my stems in later. And if your lemon or lime has a bit of a brown spot or whatever, just put that to the outside so you don't see it in your container. And again, if you guys have questions while I'm doing this, definitely feel free to let Aaron know. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna just kind of be doing this uh, going along. And since we do have our participants muted, the best way to send your questions is through the chat feature, or you can raise your hand. Um, and there's a button on Zoom that says raise your hand, and um, I will be able to see that if anybody does. Okay, so I've now filled my container with my lemons and my limes. <clears throat> and if you can kind of see the inside, <laughs> there's a bit of a space that I've left for where I'm going to place my stems. So it's, um, again, it's sort of like pushed off to the side so that there's a little bit of a empty vacant spot where I'm gonna fill in with my stems. Again, if your vase isn't that large or you don't really have that, it's not a big deal. You'll be able to stick your stems in anyways. Uh, one of the things I always like to tell people um, is that after you do this, you always wanna make sure that you are arranging in water. And Amy, that is a great transition. We got a question from Deborah Heller wondering how the best way to change the water is without damaging your arrangement. So normally I would say, especially because either you're using chicken wire um, or you're using oops, floral tape, it's easy to kind of just like lift up your container and sort of tip it out slightly and then put your water back in. But because this has lemons and limes in it, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated to try and actually switch out your water. So what you're gonna do is just refill your water. Um, if you see that the water starts to get a little bit murky, you can add just like a little touch of bleach in it and that'll help kind of clean it out. Um, if you do that, just make sure you don't eat the limes or <laughs> lemons after you've done that. Okay. So um, I don't know about you guys, but like one of my limes is floating a little bit. So I'm just gonna stick her up there for now. And then um, again, this is a little bit different because we're working with these lemons and these limes. There's no structure in the container that we need to hide. So I'm not so worried about um, having a face full of greens first. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right in with our largest 
um, flower first, which is going to be our hydrangea. And that's going to kind of take up the most amount of real estate. So you want to make sure that you get them positioned. And I'm also going to just be doing a one-sided arrangement. So if you guys are doing a full 360 arrangement, what I'm telling you, um, we'll have to sort of switch over and you'll have to do things a little bit more centered than the way I'm doing it here. Amy, we got a question um, yes. since we have the recipe for flower food. The question is whether they should add the homemade quart of flower food at the bottom of the vase. They can do that now or you can do it, you can add it in later too. Um, Any time is really fine. Uh, one important thing when you're using your um, shears and you're cutting your stems is you always want to cut everything at a really nice sharp 45 degree angle. And the one thing with hydrangeas that I've had a lot of people ask me about is how do I get my hydrangeas to last longer or how do I get them to perk up? And so what I always do whenever we get hydrangeas in is I submerge them into a bucket of cold water, the heads of them, and I let them sit in the water for typically like anywhere from like half of a day to overnight. And then um, I have the luxury of sticking them in the cooler so they get nice and cold and they stay nice and fresh, but you can always just put them in your refrigerator or you can find like a cool spot in your house and just like let them sit for a day and then they'll um, typically perk up if they've been a little bit wilted. If you notice that in your arrangement, um, tomorrow they start to wilt, you can carefully pull them out, again, submerge their head into cold water, let them sit for a little while, and then they should perk right back up. Excellent. Amy, we got a question about why Hillwood doesn't use floral foam and what some of the challenges with it are. So that's an excellent question. Um, when I first started working here, uh, we were still using floral foam, but because of the amount of arrangements that we were doing every week, you would just see these stacks of floral foam just collecting. Uh, floral foam is essentially just styrofoam. It doesn't break down, and we were just uh, producing so much trash that environmentally, uh, we decided that we needed to figure out something else to do other than use floral foam. And since we switched over to chicken wire, uh, which we've been using for at least like three and a half years now, the one thing that I also noticed is that the flowers stay fresher longer and that they actually, um, when you put them into floral foam, the foam tends to clog up the stem. And so what we're doing is, you know, there's no middleman, so to speak. The flowers are going back directly into water and it helps to prolong them. Uh, it's interesting, I think that over in Europe, uh, floral foam is actually banned now and they don't use uh, floral foam over there anymore either. Again, for environmental purposes in terms of the amount of waste that it's just taking up in the landfill. Um, and Excellent. I'm going to I'm going to interrupt and I'm going to ask Julia who has raised her hand to unmute herself and let us know what her question is. I'm sorry, I missed it. Are we supposed to have the water in the vase now? Yes. And how far up should it go? Uh my water is almost to the top. So I've left about uh I think this is like a 10 inch. Okay. Uh, inch face and I've left like three inches clear at the top without water. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And we also got a question from Eva about whether we should remove all of the leaves from flowers or how you make the decision about which ones to keep or how many to keep. So I typically don't like to have naked flowers as I call them. So I always leave a couple of the leaves on. It's one of those things that later on, if you notice that they're starting to brown or whatever, you can go back in and then trim them off. But like the hydrangea leaves are quite lovely and I like to leave some of those on as well. So I've got my three hydrangea in, which is going to be the sort of base of my arrangement. I'm then going to go in with my sunflowers because, again, these are going to take up a lot of real estate, so I want to make sure to get those in next.
one thing that I like to think about when I'm doing arrangements is that if you're working in odd numbers, it's easier to sort of design because you can kind of triangulate off of that. So then once I have my three sunflowers in, I'm gonna start to go in with the smaller flowers, which are the roses. And for those of you who are working along at home, please do not feel rushed by Amy's timeline. I'm always amazed by how quickly she can work sometimes. So I see lots of folks with their sunflowers still. Do not rush. Please take your time. Um, and we also have a question from Nicola, who is one of the folks who purchased the uh, material straight from Hillwood and she asked whether the flowers that they picked up this morning are already at about the right height or whether they should be trimmed substantially. No, they'll have to be trimmed. Um, Do you have any guidance substantially, on it? But, um, so I would say in terms of when you're thinking about uh, arranging, you want to think of the flowers being about one and a half times the height of your container. Um, it's not a steadfast rule. You can always do a little bit taller or a little bit shorter, but that's essentially the um, idea of how tall you want things to go. So that when I'm cutting my stems, like this was about the length of stem that you probably got in yours, you want to think where it's going to go and then just sort of cut from there. You can kind of use the container as a guide to how uh, short or tall you want your stems to be. Okay, so after I've gotten my roses and all of my other flowers in, I'm going to start to go in and fill with my earth. And the herbs I kind of like to cluster together to make a little bit more of an impact. And if your herbs are a little bit wilty, um, again, what you can do is you can just cut the stems, put them into water, and put them into the refrigerator for a second, and then they'll start to perk back up. Amy, we also got a question about how to balance getting all the stems in with the limes that are in the container and if there are any tips on how to get them kind of nestled in among the fruit. So if you don't have a little center opening um, in your container like I had in mine, what you can kind of do is because you can sort of just take the stem and just gently like rock it back and forth in between the lemons and the limes, and that should sort of secure it and kind of get it into place. 
Nicola, please let us know if that makes sense or if you are still struggling and we can look for other advice that might help. And so even though this is going to be a one-sided arrangement, I still do like to put stuff in the back so it's not naked in the back. And I'm gonna fill in with some of my herbs to do that as well. And then when I have it filled in, I'm gonna kind of go in and I'm gonna look at the front of it now to see what's happening. And I can go in, uh, another thing that I recommend because you're working not in floral foam, uh, one of the benefits is that you can pull the flowers in and out of the arrangement without having to worry about the integrity of the structure, which is kind of nice. I can see that everyone who is still building is hard at work. For those of you who are watching and waiting in the wings, please, please let me know if you have any questions. And we did just get a reminder that the lemons and limes um, that are used in the arrangements, of course, if you're using homemade floral uh, food, those are then absorbing bleach. So I would not recommend eating or making use of your lemons and limes if they've been in the arrangement. But if you did not get all of the lemons and limes into your container, they seem like a perfect excuse for some summer lemonade or limeade. We were talking about margaritas earlier. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to do is add in my delphinium because it's very delicate and I'm going to use this um, as sort of the way to fill in some of the blank spots that I have. Um, again, when you're working in terms of scale of flowers, the more delicate and smaller ones you want to obviously go in towards the end. That way you don't crush them with your big sunflower. And Amy, are you able to bring your arrangement a little closer to the camera and slowly uh, move the Lazy Susan so we can get a sense of all the way around it? Yeah. The stage direction, I know, is an extra challenge when it comes to uh, virtual workshops. I don't know. Can you get a better? It's a little, she's a little big, bigger than I thought she was going to be. You can't really see the top of it, can you? And if you're able to spin it around so that we can see the back, that would be great. I'm gonna get these delphinium in. So then you can see the back is not naked but there's some stuff back here as well. Um, and I'm gonna put some more delphinium in towards the back to give it a little bit more volume when you look at it from the front.
And then once I feel like I'm done adding my flowers in, I'm gonna look at the arrangement and see if there's any spots that I wanna add something else in. And I can see from, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little bit of a hole right here. So I'm gonna go in with some more basil. Kind of tuck that in there. And then you can always sort of just tweak and kind of fix the flowers so that they're facing the front or the direction that you want them to face. I might add, this is mint that I actually got from the cutting garden today. And then when you think that you are finished and you're happy with it, you just want to step back and look at it, see if she's everything you hope she would be. And again, I have a little bit of a flat spot here. So I'm just going to go in with one last dolphinium. Give it a little bit. And then you want to push everything off to the side once you've finished your piece to really be able to have a good look at it. There. How are your arrangements coming along? They're looking fantastic. Excellent. For those of you watching along at home, you might want to switch over to gallery view at this point, and you can see some of the beautiful works that folks have been following along at home. Um, Emma, I think you might have a virtual background on that has eaten you. So we have a very fun picture with part of your face peeking through the foliage. Oh yes, and we got a question, Amy, a little bit about the tea roses um, yes. and how they're bunched together rather than spread out a little bit more. So that's just an aesthetic um, option that I like to do a lot of times. If I have things, everything else that's kind of spread out in terms of the color, I wanted to sort of bunch all of my roses together to kind of make like a little bit of a focal point that will draw you in to the arrangement. Um, but again, that's just something that I decided to do kind of last minute with this one. Uh, when I made the demo one, I actually had them spread out. So it really just, it's, it's up to you. I think that both ways look really nice. That's a nice way to echo the fact that when we gather in person, it's, it's easy for me to see and appreciate that we can have, you know, 15 people in the same room and nobody makes the same arrangement and they all end up looking gorgeous. Um, I'm going to see if I can pin Kathy. It looks like your, um, arrangement. It looks like you've stopped work and are showing off a really gorgeous, are those, um, here, let me see if I can invite you to unmute as well. Yeah, definitely not showing off. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I, I love it. Fantastic. My, um, some of my flowers were not identical. Our, our, uh, flowers grow not blue but more purple pink and um, when I asked the grocery delivery guy to bring roses today he brought tulips so that's what <laughs> and I have eucalyptus um, and a hosta instead of the delphiniums I love that 
And again, in the um, in the PowerPoint, I also had some alternatives to, you know, if you can't get these particular flowers, you know, there are a lot of things that you can substitute in. A lot of it is looking for uh, the, the shape of the flower. So again, like using the, um, the hosta, did you say hosta leaves? Or? Uh, hosta flowers. Flowers. Yeah, so that gives it like a nice kind of tall element mm -hmm. to it. And the eucalyptus do the same thing. Yes, definitely. Nancy, I've put you front and center because it looks like you have also stepped away from tinkering and your arrangement is lovely. Thank you. I could not get blue hydrangeas even though I was at the Cape. So I chose some white ones that we had in the garden here. It looks gorgeous, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, and again, um, substituting in the different flowers when it is something, you know, if you can't find anything, if you can find like a tall element, that is um, really what you're looking for. Again, if you can't find blue hydrangeas, you can use white hydrangeas or whatever it is that you have on hand. It's one of those uh, things that, again, I always think it really doesn't matter as long as you have um, something that you're happy with in terms of the flowers that you've collected, I'm sure it's always gonna end up being gorgeous. Nicola, I've put your work front and center because we've got a gorgeous view of it. I can see that you're still tinkering, but it is very fun. Let's see, I can ask you to unmute. I don't know if you wanna say anything. Yeah, hi, I am. Um... I had so many flowers, I made a second arrangement. I haven't done it yet. Perfect. But, but I'm you're very generous. I thought I hope it was very generous with the flower selection. Thank you so much. This is my oh, first good. time. Yeah, and I, I got the, I clumped my roses. Excellent. Yeah, no, I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Very nice. Eva, I'm going to put you front and center now and see if I can ask you to unmute. Where did that go? There we go. That looks beautiful. Can you tell oh, us? that's wonderful. I thought it in the hydrangeas and uh, um, roses and the... I got, I'm not sure what these are. Those look like mums. Well, they're kind of like a mum. They're yes, they're and then the white for um, accent. And I the the mint is just overpowering me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delightful. Yeah, it looks like lemon out. Yeah, you you've got a beautiful little spiral of those lemons and limes, and it looks like maybe a, a footed vase too, so. Yes, 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 yes. Is there a height uh, recommendation? Like, should some flowers be higher? I've noticed that in some of the other ones that you've all done. No, it's, um, I typically like to try and keep my taller flowers, like the skinnier ones, the taller ones, um, just because they tend to be a little bit more delicate. So I like to kind of keep them up off of the rest of the flowers. But um, again, like when I was doing this as a demo first, I had thought about using like the sunflowers as the tallest ones, even though they're really big. Um, so it's really just up to you. Uh, one thing that I do like to think about is having flowers in terms of the depth. Um, so you have some that are pushed in and then some that are pulled out just to give it a little bit more um, textural quality and also the depth. So it looks like you did that beautifully. Thank though. you. Catherine, I put you front and center here too, because this looks gorgeous and I saw you twisting your lazy Susan, so we got a view of your back too. Excellent. And what are the um, the little white flowers that you well, put in there? I really like those. They look I nice. Could, I went to a couple of places. Trader Joe's usually has them or giant, but I couldn't find any white roses, so I just got little mums, and um, I mean carnations. Ah. And the that looks fantastic. 
Yeah. The herbs are all for my garden, and I love the blue thistle. So I got some blue thistle, uh, thistle. and I have lemon basil and tons of mint, as everybody else does. And I don't know if you can <laughs> see it, but the very tall piece in the back is from some kind of a bulb that I planted and it grows very tall and then just has this very delicate white kind of flower because I also couldn't find any delphinium. So anyway. It is, it is nice to see how flexible some of these arrangements can be. Um, I know Amy made some minor substitutions this morning having had some challenges with the um, with the supplies. So she got a few other fun things in. More delphiniums for folks. Let's see. Oh, Julia, have I showed you off before? This is beautiful and it looks like you're posing. Let me <laughs> spotlight you. Oh, oh that looks uh, the, with the sun coming in. It's perfect. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else who's been working at home who I have not yet shown off your good work? I don't want to start clicking on people a second time. Lynn, have I made you up here? Let's see, spotlight, Lynn. Oh no, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Did I turn it down? Yeah, oh, I love it. Oh, and I love that sprig of rosemary. Yeah. Yeah, the rosemary is great. Yeah. It's oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's very tall. Excellent. Yeah, that was good. Here we go. Someone joining us from their iPhone. So I don't have your name, unfortunately, but I can see your beautiful arrangements. Oh, hi, this is Emily. Um, Hi, Emily. I'm here, with, I'm here with Elizabeth, who is also, we're in her backyard, socially distanced, doing flower arrangements, and we just, we got the supplies from you, um, and I can show you hers, too. I'm going to go over to where hers are, because her battery died on her phone, so I just tried to keep them, uh, I tried to follow what you were doing, uh, and I don't know how successful I was, but. No, it looks fantastic. And here's, here's Elizabeth. Yeah. And uh, Annie, her daughter, also did this one, but had to go inside for flute lessons, so. Oh, it looks so a... perfect next to the Adirondack chairs. Yeah, <laughs> it does, it does. Thank you, this was really great, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, and it's so nice to see folks joining together um, and, and working at safe distances, but still, one of the things I miss about not being in person is, is that connection. So it's nice to see us all in the virtual world. Um, Michelle, have I shown you off yet? I can't, let me pin you, there we go. All right, so you should be front and center and I think I asked you to unmute. Okay. I love the apron too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That looks gorgeous. I'm yeah. not how it came. I did a 360, so. Yeah. And the one thing that I like what you did was um, your one delphinium, the way it's naturally kind of curving out. So yeah. it's really nice that you left it like that and you didn't try and fight it to make it do something else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bent a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you. This was wonderful. Oh, good. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Yeah. Arlene, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I think you might be the last one, but if I have missed somebody, please go ahead and wave and catch my attention because I do want to show off your good work. Um, and we just did get a quick chat from Pamela saying that she's looking forward to more virtual floral arranging. That's definitely something we are planning to keep doing. In August, we're gonna have our next class, which is focusing on kind of the bounty of summer and fresh flowers and, um, you know, Amy will be taking her her inspiration from our cutting garden, which is just gorgeous. Um, 
so it will be a different type of flower and that for folks um, we will be able to do supply orders again um, and we'll update that soon i hope um, so that we can get a better sense of what that arrangement will be great All right. Well, thank you so much for everyone for joining us. I just looked at my clock and see we ran a little bit longer than we expected. So I appreciate your patience and sticking in with us. Um, and thank you for being here as we learn this virtual floral um, experience. You'll be getting an email from programs at hillwoodmuseum.org in the next 24 hours or so. Um, and please, that's gonna include a link to a survey. We rely on your feedback to help make our program stronger all the time, but especially when we do something new like this virtual workshop. So please, please, please join us next month. Please share your feedback and um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Hillwood is now open to the public, so if you haven't yet come to visit us, we are um, doing everything we can to preserve social distancing, limiting access so that we've got safe quantities of folks. So right now you do need to make your reservations in advance. And if you'd like to go into the mansion or the dacha to see our special exhibition called Natural Beauties, those are spaces that you also need to select an entry time for just so we can make sure that we're keeping each of those spaces um, within social distancing guidelines. But please come visit, please keep arranging, and we're looking forward to seeing you again both on the estate and in the virtual world soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. For Thank, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you.